الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صدغة الله ومن أحسن من الله صدغة ونحن له عابدون صدق الله العظيم This is the ayah that we have been using as our theme ayah from quite some time that the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what other way is better than the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we indeed are the people who have submitted to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah that we will going to start from today is ayah number 177. It's a very long ayah, that's why I said, I told you guys a couple weeks ago when I was here the last time, that we're going to start from this ayah. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala builds a very foundation rule for the believers. That all you who believe, do not go for ritual things. There is nothing in the ritual things. It is the belief that you build is what you will going to gain the reward for. لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ This ayah has a context. When people came to Medina, the Muslims migrated to Medina, Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina, they used to pray towards Masjid Al-Aqsa. That was the Qibla. In all Makkan period, that was the Qibla. That was the direction towards they used to pray. After coming to Medina, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the Prophet, ordered the Prophet, that now you will face towards Kaaba and pray. So the people of the book, for whom Masjid Al-Aqsa was the Qibla, they didn't like that idea. They were like, first, the prophethood went away from us, from the lineage of Isaac to the lineage of Ismail, and now you're also changing the direction in which we are supposed to pray. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling everybody that there is nothing in the direction. What is more important is, وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ But the real beauty is believing in Allah, believing in His prophets, believing in the angels, believing in the life after death, believing that there will be a day on which you will be held answerable for the things that you have done, believing in the books, so believing in the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala totally is the real good. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that ordered you to face towards that direction. No, He is ordering you to face towards the other direction. So instead of going and creeping into your ego, follow the directions. Now it's pretty much like if somebody builds a new road across the masjid right here and close this road and gives you an alternate route, would you stand there complaining how great the previous road was or would you take the new route? Simple as that. That's the new route. He was the one who gave you the last route. He's the one who gives you the new route. So what are you quarreling about? What are you complaining about? Now take this idea aside and we need to look back at ourselves. The kind of things Muslims are busy debating each other with. Petty things. They don't really carry a lot of weight. But they spend their entire energy on the mimbar, on the jum'ah, in the khutbah, on those petty things. The little differences between the opinion and the understanding of the subject matters. Instead of becoming one, we are going away. And we all quote the ayah, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the true religion and its teachings and do not deviate from it yet we are forcing people to deviate. We're forcing masses to deviate. So this is not important. 
The important is to build a belief structure. Today, today, a Muslim, if you look around, is very scared. He's very scared. People in social media send me questions. Crazy questions. Scared questions. So what is the idea? Is to strengthen the iman. Strengthen the communities. Build the bounds. Reach out. Build a stronger community where you enforce the idea of living together in peace. Rather than disintegrating people even among themselves, then who will going to form unity when people are not united from among themselves? We got to be united among ourselves first before we reach out and to the community and build the unity. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam came to the city of Medina, the first thing that he did was build unity from among the Muslims in the name of the brotherhood. Not everybody who migrated was given in brotherhood to somebody from Medina. In some cases, two people from Mecca were also bound in brotherhood. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laid the foundation of strengthening from within and then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam approached the other people in Medina that now we need to write the constitution of Medina that how we in different capacity, in different religions will stay together, will stick together as one entity that we will have everything common, one enemy. One society. We will be strengthened from among ourselves. And this is exactly what we need to be doing today. Step number one. Do not fight among yourselves. Step number two. Wherever you live, make it a peaceful place. And a peaceful place is only through the process of Mingling. Mingling doesn't mean adopting. That's another fear factor. Whenever people hear the word mingling, they think, oh my God, do I believe everything? No, you don't believe everything. Because the other person is also not leaving everything. The people in Medina, just look at them. Three religions together, living under the same roof. Same laws. Same norms. This is exactly the idea that was presented in a small city of Medina. That is the idea that Muslims have to go and apply wherever they go. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the mal, the money, the wealth for which you have so much love, ala hubbihi, spend it. Spend it in good causes. Zawil qurba, start with your relatives. Wal yatama, then comes the orphans. Wal masakin, the needy people. Wabni sabil, and the people who are traveling. Was sailin, and the people who ask for money. Wa firriqab, and the people who are enslaved. Wa aqam as salah. So, whatever has been talked about before, those are the rights of people on you. Those are حقوق العباد. Now let's talk about حقوق الله, the rights of Allah. وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةِ Establish prayers. Establish. It's not easy, it's not joke that I'll pray two times today, one time today, five times one day, three times the other day. It's okay to miss. No. وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَاةِ وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَاةِ Steadfast, build it. But the problem with us is, when somebody is trying to tell us something, we are busy talking. Even in the Jum'ah, people are busy talking. They have other things that they have that they think are more important. Then the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see people smiling, we see people texting, we, pe- we see people doing other things, whatever they feel like. And yet they're present in the Jum'ah. 
Now who can you hide this from? Can you hide it from Allah? What we're going to go in the books of deeds? That this person was sitting in the masjid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Quran was being recited to this person, the Quran says, when I am being recited, be quiet. This person was talking to the guy next to him. He was ruining his rewards and also the reward of the guy next to him and everybody else that he was disturbing. Now think about it. This is the place to absorb the goodness. Because outside we are not doing it. And when we come over here, when we are still busy talking, surfing net, spending time on the phone, sitting behind pillars in the corner in the back, just because nobody sees us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all seen, all knowing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that, oh people, go out and spend. وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةِ Establish prayers. وَأَتَ الزَّكَاةِ And on top of that also given zakah. وَالْمُوفُونَ بِأَحْدِهِمْ إِذَا عَاهَدُوا And make sure whenever you promise, live up to your promises. Commit. When you sign that agreement on a piece of paper, you have to deliver what you have signed. If you go to corporate America, we have a special team called quality management. And the quality management's team is to make sure whatever product is delivered, does it delivers up to what was signed upon with the client. If it doesn't, it needs to go back and gets rebuilt. Because we have done a promise with the client, and I need to deliver what I have promised. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do in every walk of the life that whenever you commit, live up to that commitment. This commitment is with the family too. (coughs) See, when you and your spouse go in the marriage, there is a commitment. There is a commitment. And the both spouses have to live up to the commitment. So the commitment towards the family, the commitment of the family, and they are together. And there are many such examples if we look around us. At the beginning of a semester, some professors ask students to sign the syllabus. Because they want them to be committed to that syllabus, that I have read the syllabus and I will live up to the expectations. And if I don't live up to the expectation of the syllabus, you have every right to fail me. Similarly, when you go out for employment, you sign an agreement. You got to live up to that agreement. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْمُوفُونَ بِعَهْدِهِمْ إِذَا عَهَدُوا وَالصَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَحِينَ الْبَأْسِ And then there are people who have to go through the hardships in the battles, through the other norms of life. But then they steadfast in patience. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُتَّقُونَ Those are the ones who have been true. Those who have lived on these principles. This ayah is long. But it defines the piety and the principles. Do not spend time, waste time on petty things. لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ شَطَرَ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ And the goodness lies in believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His prophets, His messengers, His books, angels, day of judgment, and the list that I've discussed with you. And then on top of that, spend towards حقوق ibad however you can through all means and resources. Mal is not limited to money. It could be other things that you can do for your family. Now it's quite depressing if we go out to these old houses in town. People who work there, they have stories to share. That these people all year round look up to the Christmas or Thanksgiving. Why? Because that's the only time in a year somebody from their house may, may, may come. May come. 
the kids that they spend their entire life on raising may come once a year to visit them. And majority of them pass away after that. Either that after seeing them, they're like, okay, it's done. Or after not seeing them, they give up. So that's how it is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the believers to build the foundation on love of everybody. There's no element of hate. There's none. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet of mercy for this ummah. Yet we decide not to take out of it. That's our mistake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next ayah says, in ayah number 186, the next ayah I want to talk about today, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Whenever my servant comes and asks me, I'm near. I'm close. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعِي إِذَا دَعَان I am the one who answers whenever you call upon فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي Only ask me. وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي Only believe in me. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So that you are rightly guided. Now here comes another question. A lot of people ask. I've been asking for so many years. My prayers are not answered. And the other person, he gets everything. Common question. Why don't I get anything? Why do I have to be this way? My cousins have this, my cousins have that. Now think about it. Whatever they have and whatever you have, in the first place, who gave it? You or Allah? If Allah gave it, then the same ayah comes in the mind. أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقُ the one who created you wouldn't know what is your capacity, how much you can handle, what to give, how to give, how much to give, when to give. Are you questioning him? Because he knows you more than you do. He knows inside out. The second thing is, if you've asked for prayer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you've asked for a dua, are you forcing that he will going to accept it now? Who are we to force that? What are we? What are we? Created from a single drop? And the drop is so filthy that if it is stuck on the piece of a cloth, you got to wash that cloth. That's what you created from. That's what I'm created from. We all got created from. And our egos are sky level. That we ask because we are servants. Servants are supposed to ask. Master will give when the master thinks it's good for you to get it. And your prayers, it's by his mercy, gets rewarded in three ways. Now, right away. In the future or on the day of judgment. So either way, asking never goes in vain. There are examples in the Quran, the Prophet of God, Ya'qub alayhi salam, for years and years and years longed for his son Joseph. The lost son didn't lose hope. And when were the prayers answered? Oh, after 30, 40, however many number of years. It's a Prophet of God. Are we more pious than a Prophet of God? Children of Israel, have been asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save them from the tyrant Fir'aun. That was even before the Moses was born. Then the Moses was born. Then the Moses went to Fir'aun's palace. He raised. He became a teenager. He became an adult. He became a person who went away for 10 years. He came back. Even after coming back for years after years after years, they were still under the tyranny of Fir'aun. Then the Musa, Musa alayhi salam was ordered to leave. And when he left with them, these guys wouldn't even listen to him for 40 years. They had to roam around a desert 
until the time of Yusha ibn Nun when they conquered and established their kingdom. Subhanallah. Duas were answered by prob at the time of the great, great, great grandkids and the great, great, great grandfathers were starting to do the dua. It doesn't happen in one person's lifespan. It could go across multiple lifespans. Sometimes it happens right there and then too. The battle of Badr. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels came. And the angels came. And even after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam at the times of his companions there was a man by the name of Ala bin al-Hadrami. He's going on a conquest in the middle of the desert, they're surrounded by the enemy troops. No source of water. Can't go back, they were going to get killed. Can't go forward, they were going to get killed. No water. He raises his hands after praying two rakahs, and here comes the rain. Here comes the rain. So now also, future also, on the day of judgment also. But the asking is the key. Our job is to ask. His job is to give. When he gives, we can't force that on him. So there are some basic principles that we need to understand as individual. And the first thing we need to understand as individual is who we are. We are Muslims. The one who have submitted to the will of Allah we are his servants. We are his abd. That's all we are. We have to live a life of a humble servant. Not an ego servant. Because egoness lies with shaitan. That was he said when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him. Why do you not obey me? When I ask you in person. He said, خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِن طِينٍ He's arguing, أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَمْ بَرَ دَنْ آدَمْ You've created me from better things than him. Ego. Fir'aun is calling upon his coat saying, أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَىٰ I am your supreme lord. Namrut, the king at the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam is saying, My Rabb is the one who gives the life and death. He said, oh really? He calls upon two people from the prison and gives one a death sentence and the other one frees him up and says, I also give life and death. Egoness at the level of stupidity. And Ibrahim said, okay, my Lord raises the sun. Mm-hmm.